Hi everyone! Today I thought we'd have a look at river processes. So if you just pop that as your title. So these are the things that happen almost invisibly um, as a river moves downstream. And there's three things that we're going to look at. So if you can just draw, roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, draw sort of two lines there so you've got three sections, okay? I'm just going to pop a line across the top. Right, so the three processes that happen in rivers are erosion, which I know you're all familiar with, and then transportation, which again, nothing too new, transportation, um, and then lastly, deposition. So this, these are the things that create the landforms that we see along rivers. These are the things that move within the river. Um, these are, they look invisible, but actually when you know what to look for, you can find them. So let's start with, um, let's start with erosion. Okay, and if we just divide the page again, so we just draw a line here, and then what I want you to do is just break this box into four, so it should end up looking like that. Um, so there's two types, or rather there's two directions of um, erosion. There is vertical erosion that happens in rivers, places like waterfalls, high up in the upper course of the river. And then there's lateral erosion. So if you just draw some arrows going side to side, and that kind of side to side or lateral erosion happens in the sort of middle course and in the lower course of the river. So there's different directions of erosion. But there are actually four types. Now, if we've already studied coasts, which I'm sure we have, you'll find there's quite a bit of crossover with these um, and you'll recognize some of the words. So the first one is hydraulic action. The second is abrasion. The third is attrition. And the fourth is something called solution. Now to remember those four, sometimes quite difficult. Everyone tends to remember erosion and what happens, but they don't often remember the words. So we're gonna draw some pictures. So we're gonna draw a line like this. We're gonna draw, imagine this is the, um, this is the river bank, so this is the side of the river, and this is the river kind of moving this way. Now, with hydraulic action, when the river is in full flow, and there's lots and lots of fast, powerful um, river water, what happens is that powerful river water sort of bashes into um, the side of the river, bashes into the river bank. So fast purple river water. Um, now, the way to imagine that, I don't know if you've ever been to like centre parks or something, or you've been in a lazy river, you know how fast the water can move. And it kind of just sort of attacks the bank. And it will put like little cracks and things into the river bank. And eventually those cracks will widen. And eventually the actual material from the side of the river will fall into the water and be carried away. But we'll talk about how that happens in a minute. So that's just really the sort of the sheer force of the water. Now it's a bit different with abrasion. So if I just draw a much wider river. Now with abrasion, again, think about that fast powerful water, but inside it are lots and lots of little bits of material. And what happens is those bits of material travel with the water as it flows downstream and they also sort of bash into the um, riverbank as it were. Um, you can write the word bash if that helps. Um, and they add to the erosion. So those cracks that were kind of in our riverbank get even wider again because the material is sort of hitting the riverbank and it happens on both sides of the river. Okay, so there's sort of this sort of big 
bashing section all the way down and by doing that what happens is the river widens okay it actually gets wider um, and we see that very often with rivers as they go downstream they get wider they get deeper okay attrition let's continue with our sort of really wide river okay attrition's not one people generally remember very well but let's um it's moving on from this same idea so you've got these small particles, now they could be sand, it could be you know, tiny bits of rock, um, mud, it could be anything really. And basically what happens is they bump into each other. It's really turbulent in a river. Often you can look at river water and it's quite uh, murky, quite dark. That's because of all these particles just generally bashing into each other um, as they move downstream. And by doing that, if I draw some bigger ones, yeah, um, they get smaller. Um, you can write the word, maybe you write the word ouch. <laughs> um, they get smaller as they go um, downstream. Okay, so that's the material that's first of all come off the riverbank, moves downstream, bashes into each other, and actually gets smaller. And then the Fourth one, I don't know why I put number five there, I've just realised, sorry. So that's four, and that's three. Um, is The fourth one is solution. Now to do this, I'm actually going to draw um, this like a beaker. I'm not a science teacher, but let's just put the word acid in there. Now, the thing you need to know is that river water has a level of acidity, okay? It's not alkaline is slightly not super acidic no it's not gonna um cause you any problems but it is slightly acidic and that means that when this material that's come off the riverbank um goes into the water some of it will just naturally dissolve um because of the level of acidity in the water so something for example let's say that's clay Okay, and I'm going to put the clay into the river water. Um, that would dissolve. Now, <laughs> to remember that, if you just write, don't make me go in there. Um, with an exclamation mark as a bit of a speech bubble for the clay. Just to remind yourselves that it will, um, it will dissolve. And it will actually dissolve and, and turn into a solution with all different types of materials, not just clay. Right, transportation. This is how um, the river moves material downstream. Okay, so what we want to do for this one is divide our box, so divide the big box into four. And again, there's four different types. So just put one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna put these in order from largest to smallest, I'm doing it this way around. So the bottom one is called traction, then it's saltation, then it's suspension, and at the top we're gonna to have solution. What's that you say, the same word? Yep, it's the same word, but it's a different, well, not a different meaning, but it's a movement meaning. Now, if we just draw, riverbed so this is the bottom of the river now imagine if we were looking as a cross section through the river we might see that this is how materials moved so at the bottom of the river we have these quite angular not terribly smooth um stones or large particles basically what happens with them as the river moves downstream is they're rolled along the bottom so you can just write there large particles or boulders um, are rolled along the riverbed. They're too heavy to pick up so they only roll. Um, then we've got saltation. Now this one's quite fun. So this is like slightly smaller you probably guess where this is going. Um, slightly smaller particles, and what these do, because they're 
slightly lighter. They can't be totally carried in the water, but they bounce. So they just bounce up and down as they move along the riverbed. So if you write, this is the bouncing of smaller particles. And remember, they get smaller through attrition because they're bashing into each other. So bouncing of smaller particles along the riverbed. Okay. Now, getting smaller again, because they're bashing into each other, they're constantly colliding in the river. So what we have now are these very small particles, like this. And they're just dotted all over. It's almost like there's zero gravity. They're floating. Um, so we write there, very small sediment, that's the proper word for it, sediment or particles, is held up. By the river. So it's still moving downstream, it's still going with the water, but it's being actually held in the water. And that's where often, if you look at a river, it is brown. You could say, why is that river so brown? Well, it's actually, you know, it's holding particles in it. And another way, the last way that we see rivers and we think, oh gosh, yeah, that's a funny colour river, um, is solution. So this is where that clay, for example, has completely dissolved. It's in the water and it's changed the colour of the river and it's moving downstream with the river. So this is the dissolved, what we call load, that's what the river's carrying, it's the load of the river, of the river. Okay, so in a nutshell, those are your four types of transportation, moving from heaviest to lightest. Now, deposition. This is when material is dropped. Okay, if you're not familiar with that word, deposition, think about deposit. If you take that bit out, so it's when stuff is deposited, it's dropped. Okay, just put some arrows going down to help you remember that. Right, the first thing you need to know is that large rocks are only able to tra transport short distances. So they tend to be dropped actually in the upper course. So let's put that in. Large rocks are only able to travel short distances. So they are dropped. in the upper course. Okay, right. The next time the material tends to get deposited is actually on corners. So what I want you to do is just draw a couple of corners for our river here. There we go, we call corners meanders. And the flow, remember the flow is going like this, it kind of hits those corners the fastest flow, and then it hits this corner, there we go, and then again. So what we find is if you, the speediest bit of the river, the most velocity, is around the outside of the corners, is the fastest flow. That means if you've got, you know, the fastest flow around the corners, you're going to have the least flow, the, the slowest part of the river, is going to be on the inside. So, slowest flow is here, okay? Now, it's also here and here. Um, this is where the deposition occurs. So I'm just gonna, you can do the same, just dot on like this. This is our material being dropped. And remember, it's being dropped mostly where that slowest flow is, on the inside of the bend. Okay, so if we just do a little key here, equals, this is where deposition occurs. And we can see this in rivers. If you go to a, you know, a large river um, that's got this, then you will see what we call a river beach. Um, I'll write it there. 
so the river beach is on the inside of the bend and over here because it's been eroded lots and it's got the fastest flow we actually sometimes see a river cliff and that's just due to all that undercutting and all that erosion okay um two more things i want to quickly show you so first of all the other thing we just draw a river and now this one's going out to the sea so in quite a big sort of estuary style like this um so if you just label river and if you label sea okay and now this section here it's a zone it's a bit like when we talk about um how spits are formed actually it's a low energy zone and this is because you've got seawater coming in river water coming out and where they meet it becomes a kind of mixing there's a lot of mixing and basically that causes unfortunately quite a lot of um deposition you know because there's just not the energy in this zone so that's where we see often an estuary form just like chichester harbour estuary so that's a really good example for you now, just to finish things off, if you just draw like this, um, this is the long profile of a river. Remember, it's very um, generic. We just put upper, middle, and lower course. Okay, so we've got the sea down here, and we've got the um, mouth of the river up there, and we've got the source up here. Um, what we tend to see other things like the meanders like we showed you above um, and levees which is a, a sort of a landform um, that you see in the lower course linked to meanders um, and then your big kind of um, vertical erosion landforms like waterfalls up in the upper course okay so it just gives you just a reminder of where these things are happening but it tends to be, I mean, erosion happens all the way through, but it tends to be more transportation in the middle and lower course, and particularly deposition in the middle and lower course. Um, I hope that's helpful. It's just a real crash course in river processes. Um, and do think about how it links to coasts as well, because some of these words and some of these processes are very, very similar. Um, so it's good to kind of make those connections. Thank you very much.